Okay, guys, welcome to the call, our first official call here at M2C Academy, and uh, we're excited, right, Rodney? I got Rodney, my partner, on here with us. Rodney, say hi, everybody. That's right. Right <laughs> now, we're the only ones in the Metro 2 boom, boom room. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We're going uh, to be growing this, so as we get going, guys, we're just going to be recording this, so if you're not on this call, you will be getting the recorded version. Uh, it will be in the... Um, the portal uh, where we'll be uploading all the the new uh, videos that we do each week. Uh, this is actually going to be a series of uh, different videos each uh, week. We're going to be coming to you with uh, Mondays will be uh, for beginners. So we're going to keep it very light, very simple. It will be an easy process of basically um, learning the ins and outs of what you should be doing to get started here at M2C Academy and have success as quickly and as possibly as fast as you can. And obviously we all know that uh, guaranteed, we do not uh, guaranteed any results here, but we can tell you from our experience and from all the awesome posts that you see every day in the mastermind that uh, the results are there if you work at it. So, uh, and uh, we can- Well, I, I would do get one guarantee. The guarantee is this. You will at least get the, you will get at least the same results or better than what you have with any other method that's ethically done. There you go. If it's legal, we have it. We will equal it or better it without a <laughs> doubt, no doubt. All right, good deal. I'm a I'm a hundred percent sure of that. Well, there you go. So coming from the man himself, the re, the credit repair champion, Rodney Peak. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to keep this very casual, guys. We're going to keep this very just to the point, uh, but casual. We're going to be trying to answer questions um, that you submit before we do the calls. We're going to try to grab questions as uh, we do these calls, as we keep moving forward. But I think as today, since this is the first call, uh, we are going to be really focusing on just a few details, I think, that have been swirling around the mastermind group. Uh, a lot of questions on the RTG, a lot of questions on the difference between a challenge versus dispute and why you should be doing a challenge instead of dispute, possibly. Um, we're also going to talk about... <laughs> it's like the difference between a Superman and a uh, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. So if you're just coming on, uh, just hang tight and listen in. Uh, Chrissy, I see you popping on there. Welcome to the call. Um I just have you guys mute yourself out as you come on, obviously, because we don't want to get a lot of feedback. But then we'll unmute you. If you have questions, you can raise your hands. Um, so let's, why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and jump in? This is the first call, and uh, I want to be sure that we get off on the right track, that we're talking about the right things that we need to talk about for a beginner call, right? I mean, that's what this is, just to give you the the what you should do and what you possibly should not be doing and uh, try to give it to you the best way we can. So, Ronnie, why don't we jump into this? If you're okay with that, you ready to get going with this? Yeah, I don't know if I want to jump as big as I am, but I'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal. So, why don't we start out with, um, why don't we talk about what the difference between, and this is for brand new people. Again, guys, we're going to keep this very basic and to the point, and if you're a little bit uh, more advanced, I apologize. This call is probably not the call to be on. Just jump on the next one or just hang out for this call and you might pick up something, right? I mean, we're going to be talking about the RTG, so that might help you. So why don't we just talk about um, a difference between challenge and the dispute, Roddy? If you could give us a difference there, let's start with the challenge and why you should be using that versus the dispute and uh, the, the, sim the, the difference in why you should be uh, using it and not using it, if you will. Okay. Well, again, all this stuff is based on the opinion of the academy. It is not no uh, black dictionary or Webster dictionary or wiki pinky. This is based on our experience and our uh, opinions. So anything that's, that is that is just that. It's nothing legal. It's uh, it's what our opinions are and what our thoughts. Again, based on what we've known and have learned over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. To me, when I was just doing disputes only, which I used to do, believe it or not, for a number of years before I started challenging, um, I always had a bad feeling because I knew that most times the client came to me 
that when they gave me their credit report and I looked at their credit report, I'm looking at all these derogatory and adverse uh, information that they're claiming is inaccurate. I knew good and darn well to myself that in all likelihood, some, if not a majority of it, was actually correct information, true information, and it was actually theirs, and it felt like I was almost helping them. Um, I, I don't want to say the word fraud because it is a right for them to dispute anything at that point, but I felt like I was helping them escape responsibility and doing it unethically. I wasn't cool with that. Um, and with a dispute, you, it, it kind of almost uh, requires or assumes that an item is inaccurate Incomplete, uh, untrue, untimely, um, not yours or not your responsibility, or any other way you're not compliant, um, which is not always true. In fact, I used to be a collector, and I'm telling you right now, even as a collector way back in the early 2000s, even back then, we were almost 97% of the time fully compliant, 100, almost 100% compliant. It was rare that we were not compliant. Um, the problem was presenting documentation um, and proof of that compliance. But back then, that part was not a requirement. It was only required that you be compliant, but it was not required for you to certificate. You didn't have to sign a uh, document saying that it's certified. Now, as a collector and as a creditor, you do have to sign a document saying that it's not only true, accurate, complete, the timely is of that person's ownership and is of that person's uh, um, responsibility and completely true on how it's reported in every way, shape, and form and how it was entered, all this stuff. But you have to certify it. And the Supreme Court has clarified what certified means. Certified means is a statement that is testimonial in truth. And to be a testimonial in truth, that means you have to testify to it. It's something that's a court order statement. It's truth by a testimony. Um, there is no, there is irrefutable. It's undoubted. It, it is what it is. It's a fact. Um, and obviously when you dispute information, you're, you're assuming the client is telling you the truth. And let's be honest, your kids don't even tell you the truth all the time. So you know good and darn well a uh, client most of the time. And, and I just had a really bad problem with uh, dealing with that. I mean, I did it because that was what my job was, but I wouldn't always challenge every or dispute everything because the client told me that, you know, something wasn't, but I looked at it and I could tell it clearly it was theirs. I refused to dispute it unless I actually found an inaccurate item. And you really have to really dig deep to find an inaccurate item um, as reported based on the true credit report, not some monitoring site. That's why I, I'm a big fan of actually looking back door. Mm -hmm. But again, they, 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 to break it down to a layman's terms, a dispute is the argument um, to the fact of truth, to the fact of correctness, or the fact of completeness. Whereas a challenge is not none of those things. A challenge is saying, hey, it can be all that stuff. We're not saying it's not true. We're not saying it's not correct. We're not saying it's not complete. We're not saying it's not yours. We're not saying it's not your responsibility. We're not even saying it's not compliant. What we are saying is that you certified it, and since EOSI says very clearly that EOSI is a web-based, Metro 2 automated, or Metro 2 compliant automated system, that they have to be there and they have to certify it. And lo and behold, on their AUD, the Automatic Universal Data Forms, it does say at the very bottom of the page, it has no sign of signature there, where it says, that, hey, we have certified that all information in this document is true, complete, correct, and accurate. Or uh, I guess that's an accurate, right? but um, <laughs> process right. In other words, they had to enter in a certain way. They, like, for example, a uh, collector and a creditor cannot paste and copy into a, uh, a box. You know, if they could do that, all they got to do is paste and copy from the last month's reporting and put it back in there. Now, why does that matter? Here's why. You know as well as I do, if you take a piece of paper and you write a, a whole page of documents, just one page, maybe it's 500 words or whatever, Hello? you know, 500 letters or whatever, 
and then you take another page and try to copy it. You can copy it correctly, but odds are somewhere along the line you're going to make a mistake. You're going to mess up one letter, one 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 word. Somewhere along the line, you're going to make a mistake. Well, in the same format, if somebody has to type in from one box to another box, odds are what? They are going to type it wrong somewhere. Maybe not all the places, but somewhere. But all it takes is one error. And I know for a fact that there is so many layers, it's almost physically impossible. And the calculation says it's almost impossible for human nature to get everything exactly correct all the time. Back when I was a collector, we could actually paste and copy. Now, it won't even allow you to do it. So there's, there's almost no chance at all for them to be 100% accurate on the format itself. Somewhere there's an error. It's just a matter of finding that error. But a good thing is, uh, when the CRSA came about and that's the Credit Report and Settlement Act of uh, 2015, where the New York uh, State Attorney General and, and, and most states in, in America came together and they, they went against the bureaus. You can read about it if you want to. Uh, we probably have articles in our uh, group about it. Mm-hmm. But a uh, long story short, the bureaus wanted to be able to use um, the ability to um, um, transfer informa- information electronically. And that caused a really big issue because um, that would eliminate the need for a wet signature contract. And that's one reason why the 609 is very ineffective now because most of them actually asked for that. But also the bureaus had a problem with the fact that people that were using 609 and other uh, methods were just quoting a common law. And there's so many aspects to the 609, but they were not being specific to it. They were just saying 609. Well, 609 covers a whole bunch of things. Mm-hmm. And the bureau's are like, hey, this is not fair. You know, we're having to answer a bunch of questions that are not even related to this item. Okay. And it just ain't right. And it's just not feasible in today's world. Today's world is about technology. Well, the judges and the courts agreed and ended up being an agreement um, called the Credit Report and Settlement Agreement. Um, I've heard people say, call it the Credit Report and Settlement Act. It's not an act, but I guess it'd be one of the same. Uh, don't really matter, CRSA. Well, the result of this was before that time, EOSA was defined as an accurate and complete system and blah, 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 blah. They didn't have the words Metro 2 compliant in there at all, nowhere. Well, as of March 9th of 2015, right after CRSA got, you know, got approved and agreed to and this and that, the uh, CDIA which is a combination of Innovis, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, and some other entities, but they got all together, and they got with the uh, working group on the, the uh, um, National Working Group Credit something, whatever. I have to type it out to you. I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's basically called a working group, and they're basically a uh, organization that guides what is being done in the credit reporting world based on this act and they said look you know if you're gonna if you're gonna require you know us to to allow you to do uh, electronic transformation you've got to at least let the people know you're doing it so they changed the definition or the description of e-oscar and they included metro 2 compliant in the wording now knowing this i know for a fact that any judge or any court you go to is going to hold them to that definition because we didn't make it up. You didn't make it up as a consumer. You didn't say they had to be much too compliant. They voluntarily said they were. And since they said they were, they're going to have to, you know, be that. Um, I can't be a CRO, a credit card organization, and say, hey, you know what? I am 100% going to give you deletions in five days. Well, cause if I said that, I better get you deletions in five days or else I'm going to be liable to whatever damages I created. Well, the same thing with these bureaus and the um, credit, credit mafia, what I call them. <laughs> but anyway, if they are not Metro 2 compliant, they have to certify it, by the way. Uh, if they're not, then they have to remove information because it's not proven to be such. And they have to be, um, according to the, um, the way it's written. Um, okay. So in short... Again, a dispute is arguing to the fact of, of accuracy and completion. A challenge is saying to certify it. 
and show us the certification. That's it. And the reason why it works, and that's the most important reason why it works, here's, this is why. The reason why it works is because even though they are most often compliant, it still takes effort, money, time, logistics, and just a lot of complication simply to just certify it um, and, and present it. It has to be presented to you in a format that you can actually understand. And it costs money to do that. Um, it becomes so costly and so overwhelmingly burdenous that it's almost not worth doing it, especially if it counts closed. And as long as the uh, credit industry is a for-profit um, industry, which I can't imagine never not being one, as long as it is about for-profit, then money's going run to run the, uh, run the world uh, in the credit world. Mm -hmm. And if money runs it, that means the expenses got to be lower. And if you're this challenge, not dispute, but if your challenge or your consumer complaint checking for compliance, if that causes more than the value of keeping the account, they're not going to resist no more because it makes no sense to resist. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's let's talk about the, the the dispute part of this because with the challenge, for what you're saying from the challenge, right? If, if you're challenging them, it's actually more costly to them with the challenge to follow through and actually prove it versus just not reporting it anywhere, which actually in in, in turn is getting it deleted. Correct. Right. And okay. Then, I, I think I, I I think I know where you're going on. Right. So let's yes, talk okay. about the right. dispute, why the dispute would be a less option or a, or a worse option in this situation because of the verification. Okay. Well, I don't want to say the worst option, but I'm going to say it's not as beneficial. Let me tell you why. A dispute. A lot of times the dispute will come back, and here's why. Not because it was removed for the wrong reason, but any time an item of information is removed, it can be put back on as long as it's compliant. People think that just because something gets deleted, it can't come back. That is absolutely 100% not true. Any information, whether it's disputed or if it's removed because of compliance issues, whatever, it can come back. And if it's worthwhile, it will come back. Now, here's where our challenge and our dispute differ the most. This is the biggest reason why it differs. A dispute gets usually uh, a deletion because of a violation or an infraction, or they hadn't answered in time, some other reason. But as soon as they update the information and they become compliant, it comes right back. Now, they ain't saying they always will do that. A lot of times they won't do that, but they can and they usually do. Now, a compliance issue, if they got, if the item got removed or did not get answered or they didn't resist it because of compliance, it was normally because it was too busy work um, it was too financially uh, hard, it was too time-consuming, or there was just too much logistics to it. There's a reason, alternatively, why they didn't do it. Now, that reason does not go away because the item went away. So the odds of them, if it was too, too much for them to retain it and to resist initially, why would I think three or four or five months or even a year down the road that they're going to say, oh, boy, now it's worth putting it back on there? It's, you know, the value didn't go up. <laughs> right. So, it, you know, if it was too costly at one point, it would probably be too costly at another point, too. And right. if it got removed because of, if it got removed or not reported because it was too costly at X time, when Y comes around, it probably still is too costly and too much effort. Okay. So hence why it works.